Jason. Fragile boy. Fragile boy. If we could do something for the totally disenfranchised in this country, no matter what, can we give can we give a huge monk, a chunk of money to the people who are disenfranchised, to minorities who have who want so badly to stay in business and can't, and to people who who are trying to go to college or have student loans who are minorities who are the most affected because they had the least chance in our country. That's got to be something both sides can agree to. Perhaps you mistook them for somebody who gives a damn for what Ooh, you just geez. described. That's yeah, that's the problem. Why do oh. these niggas sneak? Why do why these niggas sneak? This and why these niggas sneak? Why these why these niggas sneak? This and why these niggas sneak? Why these why these niggas sneak? This and why these niggas sneak? Why 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 these niggas sneak? This and why these niggas sneak? Why 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 these niggas sneak? This and we're not going to get into sophisticated politics. We're going to talk about a problem that we have in, in, in young America. Young Americans being disenfranchised, disenfranchised, disenfranchised. Only 36% of us have voted. And um, I wanted you to speak. You're, some, you're, you're one of the few politicians that young people relate to. And we want to just hear a message on why you feel it's important for them to vote this year. Young people, that and, and please uh, um, talk to the people that are disenfranchised. disenfranchised, 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 disenfranchised that don't believe in the power of their vote? Well, I really think that this year more than any other, uh, young people have their entire futures at stake. Uh, when I go to the floor of the Senate to cast a vote, I'm casting a vote about what the economy is going to look like and what kind of jobs are going to be available, whether there's going to be health care, whether there's going to be good education. Every issue that you can imagine has a direct impact on how every young person watching is going to live his or her life. And so I would hope that this year, more than any other, people would stop and think, hey, you know, do I want to wake up in five years and, you know, have more violence in the streets than we do now, more homelessness, more people out of work, you know, kids not even having a chance to get educated, hospitals closing down. This is a direct This video for these niggas that's out here sneaking. That's crazy. Yeah, niggas that sneak this and come out two months away, when every citizen of voting age will have their chance to be heard, even this guy. Thing is the category, and Vanna, when you're ready. Edgar. Fish love? Fish love? Sorry, Edgar, but the category was thing, so the answer we were looking for was fish lube. It's, it's the thing you use when you want to fuck a fish. Fish lube. But a lot next time, Edgar. The, 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 the fact is, while that fish fucker may be able to cast a vote, a surprisingly large amount of people are barred from doing so. It's estimated that more than six million Americans are barred from voting because of felony disenfranchisement laws. Is a felony disenfranchisement laws. Is a felony disenfranchisement laws. It's true, six million people are unable to vote because at some point in their life they committed a felony. That is a lot. For perspective, that's like if you took all the people who bought a copy of Robin Thicke's divorce opera, Paula, and then added almost six million more people. <laughs> and look, if any of you are thinking at this point, well, who really gives a shit if convicted felons can't vote? You frankly wouldn't be alone.
they committed crimes, are they the best people to judge some of these laws that are to be passed? Would we rather live in a society where there are no consequences for our actions? I just think that they've done something wrong, so I don't really think they should be allowed to be voting in our president and stuff like that. Oh, oh you don't, do you? You think if someone makes a mistake, it should follow them for the rest of their life, whether they were convicted of marijuana possession or went to brunch dressed like a TJ Maxx Janis Joplin. I get it, I get it. But look, the fact here is, Many lawmakers actually agree with her. Here is Mitch McConnell arguing that keeping felons from voting is a public safety issue. We're talking about rapists, murderers, robbers, and even terrorists or spies. Do we want to see convicted terrorists who seek to destroy this country voting in elections? Okay, first, <laughs> terrorists are not voting, are they? They're all about making giant violent points that get everyone's attention, not lining up in a public school gymnasium to write in ISIS for the school board. And, and second, the most recent analysis found only 18% of felony convictions were for violent crimes of any sort, meaning the vast majority were for non-violent offences like property or drug crimes. And for those who have served their sentence but are still unable to vote, this situation is understandably frustrating. At what point do we break the cycle? At what point are we able to say, hey, you know what, I am citizen enough, you want me to work, you want me to pay taxes, you want me to make sure I take care of my family, but yet I can't vote. So am I a citizen or am I not a citizen? Yeah, he's got a point because that man is suffering taxation without representation. And historically, that's been a bit of a sticking point for America. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I learned about that in school. Something about the American savages threw tea into the water without even having the common decency to add a splash of milk. <laughs> so, so tonight, so tonight, Let's look at felony disenfranchisement, and one state in particular, because these six million disenfranchised voters are not evenly distributed around the country. In most states, people with felony convictions automatically regain their voting rights at some point, but there are a few where they do not. And the worst state of all concerning this, and arguably everything else, is Florida. Around <laughs> one and a half million of its citizens, nearly 10% of its adult population, have completed sentences for felony convictions, but still can't vote. And given the iniquities of our justice system, that burden is disproportionately felt by African Americans. Because in Florida, over one in five black adults cannot vote. That is staggering. It may be the dumbest thing about Florida. Florida is the disenfranchisement capital of America. So how did that happen? Well, for starters, a post-Civil War change to their constitution stripped all convicted felons of their voting rights for life. And while Florida's governor can restore those rights, the current one, Rick Scott, seen here auditioning for the role of Happy Pencil in All My Nightmares, <laughs> he has made this process much more difficult. Because while the governor before him made regaining voting rights close to automatic for many non-violent offences, Scott implemented a system where you have to wait five to seven years just to apply to get your vote back, then submit an application, then wait more, then, in many cases, have to travel to Tallahassee, which no one should ever have to do under any circumstances, <laughs> to argue your case in person. These obstacles are ridiculous and unnecessary, and this is how Scott justified them. Look, if you, if you are a convicted felon, part of what you did is you lost your rights. Look, if you, if you are a convicted felon, part of what you did is you lost your rights. Look, if you, if you are a convicted felon, part of what you did is you lost your rights. Well, administratively, it may be difficult, uh, and the difficulty has been caused by the state of North Carolina. Uh, in terms of the uh, law, I think that we're on very strong grounds that uh, what the state has done is designed to disenfranchise a significant number of African Americans and Latinos here in the state of North Carolina, and that was done purposefully. Uh, they knew what they were doing when they did it, and uh, I think that the evidence that we presented at trial clearly showed that. So while I think the, uh, the, the law is very strong on our side, I think the judge is in a very difficult position in terms of trying to maneuver all of this through and have a decision before the uh, uh, March uh, primary. Don't you find it, Mr. Joyner, rather amazing that the advocacy groups who want to suppress the vote in this country are so legally strong to put judges in this position? You know, it really wasn't supposed to be this way, was it? <laughs> Well, you know, you would think that we would have a uh, impartial uh, judiciary that's uh, committed 
uh, to the rule of law and more particularly to the constitutional rights that people uh, enjoy. We have both the federal constitution and the state constitution which gives every citizen mm -hmm. uh, the right to vote. And uh, what we are faced with here is an effort to prevent a significant number of people from voting for the benefit of a select few people that would keep a kind of a white right wing sure. uh, conservative group in power. Irv Joyner, he's a professor of law at North Carolina Central University. Mr. Further criminalizing the disenfranchised youth of our community is not the answer. Why these niggas sneak? Why, why, why these niggas sneak? This and why these niggas sneak? Why these, why these niggas sneak? This and why these niggas sneak? Why these, why these niggas sneak? This and why these niggas sneak? Why, why, why these niggas sneak? This and why these niggas sneak? Why, why, why these niggas sneak? This and, this and, why, 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 why